up in the ring. Boyd Pierce is ready to introduce this event to you. Your next event, ladies and gentlemen, two out of three falls with a 45-minute time limit for the World's Midget Championship. Introducing first, at 99 pounds, the challenger to my left, Bobo Johnson. And across the ring in the white corner, 98 pounds from London, England, the midget champion of the world, Lord Littlebrook. Well, there he is in all of his 92 pounds of glory, the world's midget champion, Lord Littlebrook. His opponent, Bobo Johnson, almost a big man in comparison with the champion. He uh, towers over him some three or four inches and of course outweighs him by about eight pounds. But both these men are midgets. They are perfectly formed and developed little men. Some of the wrestlers whom we call midgets are really dwarfs. But in this case, Little Brook and Bobo Johnson rate the term midget. Bobo is shifty and fast, but then Littlebrook has been defending that belt he wore into the ring for a considerable time and very successfully. And Littlebrook is tough. He's a rugged London product. Wow. <laughs> Well, how would you feel if the rope was that high around your legs? He doesn't think it's very nice of people to, to laugh at him. Standing arm lock for Bobo Johnson. And if you could hear ay 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 over the television microphone that time, then that was Lord Littleburg. Don't be trying to adjust your sets. These fellows are small. It's not that the ropes are hi higher than usual. Bobo, head scissor, well applied. And fans can hear Lord Littlebrook as he uh, denies that he wants to capitulate. Still a head scissor and Littlebrook came out nicely. You saw him with a fancy move as he bounced his weight backward and then managed to just squeeze his head loose. In this case, the long hair helped. It doesn't help everything, but it helped this case. Side headlock and he whips him down and holds him there. So Bobo with his shoulders close to the to the canvas. Little Brook trying to pour the 92 pounds of weight to him. And Bobo again comes up with the arm lock. In this case, again, a Japanese arm lock. Hammerlock for his lordship. And Littlebrook managed to get the attention of Irish Danny McShane around to the opposite side of the ring and then jerked Bobo by the hair. Trouble for Bobo. You see Bobo kicking that canvas. This is an involuntary reaction you get when something hurts on in one place. You manage to make another move. Not that it relieves it, you just get the feeling that maybe it does. Still, Lord Littlebrook's hammerlock. <laughs> now it's a arm bar, it's well applied, and Littlebrook is really asserting his superiority at this particular hold at any rate.
and Bobo racks him up in a jackknife. His shoulders are close, not down. You can see under them, and McShane can see too. And little Burke doesn't um, like some of the suggestions that the fans on the outside of the ring are giving him. Double wrist lock. Now you see. He just got him off balance and rolled him back with his shoulder and the grip on the trunks was helping him along. Bobo's ready to fight at the drop of a kick. Ooh, clobbered him right on the sternum that time. He made a mistake. He brought that leg up to hit him in the head, and Bobo likes it. <laughs> Five minutes have gone by. No falls as yet. This is a three-fall match. No falls have been scored as yet as Bobo caught one. Littlebrook's fast with those arms of his. At one time here, he took on a radio announcer from a Houston radio station and wrestled him in a five-minute match. The <laughs> radio announcer <laughs> had a new respect for midgets when the match was over. <laughs> Littlebrook crowds Bobo into the, into the rope and finds that open area. Clouding him. Bobo now getting the command from the fans to give him another one. Oh, he got one. How he got one. A jackknife and Littlebrook. Racks him up with a jackknife, and the champion takes the first fall in this two out of three match. The winner of the first fall, six minutes, ten seconds, the champion, Lord Littlebrook. And we'll be back here in a moment for the second fall of this action from the Sam Houston Coliseum after this word from the studio. Second fall. Well, just before the bell sounded, and Boyd Pierce, our ring announcer, and Bill Varley, our timekeeper, were giving the countdown in seconds, Lord Littlebrook started across that ring. Well, by the time the bell had sounded, he had been avoided by Bobo Johnson and crashed into the turnbuckle. <coughs> His lordship is a little confused that he can lose a hold like that on Bobo Johnson. Paul Nelson, you see Bobo pressing down with his arms because he has the advantage of height. This is a big advantage in this particular grip. And got it. He marshaled the muscles together and worked well. Snaps it on again, full Nelson for Bobo Johnson, no, full Nelson this time for Bobo Johnson, I should say. And the Lordship is at a disadvantage because the Bobo's arms are longer. And here's a bit of play on the feet with the Lord trying to hook a leg and not quite making it. Snaps back. Test the strength. You see the fingers interlocked as Bobo Johnson tries to get the advantage of the leverage, and he has succeeded. He whipped that hand around and bent it backward. Ha <laughs> ha! That's using your feet.
fast move, nice leg dive for Lord Littlebrook, and he's not satisfied with the hold that he's got. You can see where, where he's finding a handle. <coughs> McShane suspects what's happening on the other side, but um, doesn't get around there in time. Well, he may this time if he can pull some of the hair out of the way. Spinning toe hold, an inside toe hold now. And Bobo with his shoulders close. And Littlebrook leans into that foot. There's again the spinning toe hold. Tell you one thing, when you're his size and you can move with the agility with which he moves at times, and you hit the canvas, you can bounce up awful fast. <laughs> Those legs <laughs> uh, don't have far to go. Well, he's going to unwind for sure. <laughs> And I don't Im imagine it would be inappropriate to say that that one was right on the whiskers. There's the twist on the arm, and he's got that hand bent back with exceptionally good leverage. Lordship ran into a problem that time. Bobo was ready for him. So Littlebrook finds himself in trouble as Bobo Johnson is ready to knock his block off, to say the least. Jackknife, which has been Littlebrook's effort at defense since this match started. Five minutes have gone by. This is the second fall of a two out of three fall match, and Lord Littlebrook has one fall uh, to the good. You can see the shoulders are close, and Littlebrook on the other side has a handful of those trunks heisting up on them. Well, <laughs> possible. <laughs> the hold is a double wrist lock. Littlebrook trying to keep him off balance. He likes to get him back into the ropes where the referee takes charge and starts to break the hold. And oh, man, that'll take the skin off your nose for sure. But pound for pound, they hit just as hard. And that's, that's the answer. And Bobo Johnson feels like he's got something going for him right now. He does. Oh, <laughs> one more, says Bobo, and the fans say one more. Knocked him askew. Oh, man, he delivers that well. Top man, Bobo Johnson. There it is. The equalizing fall. The second fall of this match goes to... The winner of the second fall, seven minutes, two seconds, the challenger, Bobo Johnson. Goes to Bobo Johnson. We say we'll be back here in a moment. Let's now have this word from the studio.
the final fall of this battle here for the world's midget title as each man has won and Bobo Johnson moves in on Lord Littlebrook, the champion, who holds up in the corner with the intention of trying to set a trap for Bobo Johnson. You can bet that something is going on in the head of the wily Englishman because he, he knows a lot of tricks. Arm and headlock, but the hip under managed to get a whoa, ferocious look on Littlebrook's face. trying to set, oh, the nutcracker. He twisted his ankles just around the head, one in one direction, one in the other. And when it happens to you, you feel something like a chiropractor adjusting your neck, except without the uh, effort to make you feel better that a chiropractor uses. Oh, wham, bam, Sam. Top man, Littlebrook, as he kneels on Bobo and starts to work on Bobo's throat. Bobo in trouble. Now the fans start to hit the mat. Bobo leading them, kicking that foot of his. You can see Littlebrook is getting a little annoyed at the support. And Bobo found tender territory. Midgets like these men have wrestled everywhere in the world. Europe, South Africa, South America, Japan, Australia, New Zealand. And right now, Bobo Johnson would like to take the midget title and do something about it. Well, he hit him with something, and if I'm not, yes, he did, he did it again. There goes Littlebrook going for the pin. He could make it. He did it. He did it. He racked him up with that reverse jackknife. He managed to get his weight on the chest. Winner and still champion of the world, Lord And as he took him forward, he managed to uh, grab the legs, keep his weight on the chest, and Bobo's efforts, which were good, came to naught. We'll be back here in a moment. Right now, let's pause for this word from the studio.